my name is Callie Chappelle and thanks for watching this video, part three of our How to Be Negative series, What's to Do When You're Not Speaking. This video is part of a larger series of videos for novice debaters called the Novice Go Fight Win series. So my name is Callie Chappelle again. I'm a debater for the University of Michigan and I debated for Traverse City Central High School in high school. I'm a 2N, 1A, and I think the 2 and C process counter plans rock. So quick introduction. Um, so how do you make the most out of these videos? Well, you should definitely take notes and you should rewatch bits that you need to really explain. Hopefully we'll have worksheets and or supplemental materials that will go along with the video, so you should check in the video description to see if I posted them. If I haven't, pester me. Next, take a deep breath. You don't need to memorize it all, but at least you should be familiar with everything in the video. It's a building process. And finally, your coach may like things differently, or you may like to debate in a different style. That's totally okay. This is just one starting point, not an end point. So throwback Thursday. So first is the role of the negative. Um, this is in part one, the basics. And the second one was the big goals of the negative with different off case positions. Our second part was the speeches where I went speech by speech on the neg um, and talked about what should be happening. So this uh, video, we're gonna be talking about what you should be doing when you're not speaking. Well, if you're the one end during the one AC, what you should be doing is whatever the two end wants them to do. Often I'll have the one end look for strategic errors or contradictions in the one AC that I can use in cross X. Sometimes I have them pull more case arguments. Sometimes I have them highlight parts of the one of the one NC if they aren't highlighted already. Usually this is like case extra case cards. Um, I have them double check things that I have that make sure that I have everything in place. So common things that I personally forget to do in the one NC is I always forget to insert the plan text into the counter plan text if the counter plan is a pick. I also often forget to insert plan specific links to DAs. Sometimes I, there's a terminal impact that I forget in the one AC, so I have the one end grab impact defense to that, all sorts of stuff, but this is usually what they do. So what does the two end do during the one AC? Well, I like to finalize putting together any case or off case. Ideally, this is done before the debate. Uh, I like to read through the un underlined parts of the one AC for contradictions or things to cross X on. I think of Slayer cross X questions, and I also think about my ideal two out of strategy based on what the F is. So what should the 2N be doing during the 1NC? Well, you should be watching the time and make sure that the 1N will get through everything. If they're not gonna get through everything in the time allotted and you need them to get to something at the end, then you should tell them to move on from non-critical arguments. So let's say I had four off case and they're like going really slow to the fourth off case, not really something I'm, extend I'm planning on extending in the block and I really need them to get more time on case, then by the time they, right before they get to the first off case, I or the last one that I want them to skip, I'll just be like, move on. And then they'll know to move on. Right? That I should also have some extra cards ready in case the one end can read them if they're being especially speedy. Sometimes the one end gets up there and it's just like, oh, I'm going so fast. Um, and then they have extra time with their speech. Well, don't waste that time. Have them read more cards. You should be prepping overviews for the block. So especially thinking about how the DA turns case, how the counter plan solves the specific AF advantages and mechanisms, how the case specifically links and turns case solvency. During the one NC, I often like write up case extensions because I usually extend case in the two NC, um, all those things. So what should the one end be doing during the two AC? Well, the one end should be flowing. The one end should be prepping for their cross X. The one end should be doing whatever the two end wants, obviously. And then in cross X, you should not be crossing things about that you're not extending in the block. So you should have figured this out before cross X. So you should know like, okay, we're not gonna be extending the counter, the counter plan. So I don't need to cross X about it. And you shouldn't decide what's going to be in the block before the two AC because the two AC maybe mishandle will mishandle an argument that you didn't expect or have stellar answers to your A strat, and you'll want to be adapt based on the two AC. The two N during the two AC should be flowing, flowing, flowing. So it's your fault if you drop something in the block or if the two N R drops something. You have 13 minutes to answer eight minutes. It's embarrassing if you drop something. Next, you should be pulling blocks. So like I talked about in the F video, how the two AC pulls blocks during the one NC. You should also be thinking about strategic errors the 2AC might be making, such as re reading a link turn and an impact turn, and, or reading an economy impact and reading econ defense. And then you should think about how you can exploit this in the block. So what does the 1N do during the 2NC? Well, you should be prepping for the 1NR, and, and if your 2N wants you to, you should be backflowing the 2NC. Uh, but in, if your 2N's asked you to backflow, you absolutely should do it. What should the 2N be doing during the 1NR? Well, you should be making sure they don't drop anything first. Next, you should be flowing and thinking, and then third, you should be thinking about how you want the 2NR to go down. What should the 1N be doing during the 1NR? Well, you should be writing stuff for the 2NR, whatever they need. If the 2N needs cards, you should find those cards. Like, if the 2N wants to double check AF cards, then you should be double checking those things. Often, I'll have my 1N type up, so like, let's say I'm going for the politics DA, and um, 
there's like part of the debate that I want analysis on that I like don't have time to think about with like meta level things. For example, like the uniqueness debate, I'll have the one and type up like what I should say in the uniqueness debate. Or like if they make a tricky answer in the one AR that I like wasn't prepared for, then I'll have them like write up something about that so I can like focus on like other parts of the debate. Okay, so the two and during the one AR. We should be thinking about what you're gonna go for in the two and R. You should be thinking about the big ideas about how that strategy will interact and outweigh the F. You should be looking for strategic errors in the 1AR, so for example, if they extend a link turn but forget to extend uniqueness, or they drop the out the loser or like whatever they do, and then you should guess what arguments the 2AR will go for based off 1AR coverage, so that's how much time the 1AR spends on specific arguments, and then you should weigh how much of a threat they're going to be against various 2AR strategies. So let's say the 1AR invests a lot of time on the counter plan on the permutation, and you really think the permutation probably solves the counter plan, and you're probably losing the permutation. Well, you should be thinking about if um, first, if you even want to go for the counter plan, given that you think you're going to lose the perm. Um, but second, you should be thinking about kind of what the time allotment is going to be and the time management of the permutation debate in the 2 and R, if you're going to go for the counter plan. What should the 1M be doing during the 2 and R? You should be flowing, absolutely, because you should make sure the 2 and R isn't dropping anything. That's, like, super important. Even though the 2 and R is the head of the AF team, or the NEG team, the 1N is still, like, the sidekick, right? And you got to make sure that your 2 N's got stuff... Uh, all ready to go because they don't then you're also to blame right for losing so thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you really enjoy it oh here's one thing i forgot to include after the debate's over you should absolutely shake hands with the other team that's tommy courtesy and it's also super nice great well thanks for watching this video and i wish you the best of luck to go fight with